Uh, hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, for this meeting, Diana and I, we have selected uh, specific figures from the supplementary material to provide additional detail or illustrate the content of this paper called Integrated Single Cell and Unsupervised Special Transcriptomic Analysis Defines Molecular, molecular Anatomy of the Human Dorsolateral Prefrontal Cortex. So I will start um, talking about these three, these first three supplemental figures, the number one, two, and three. These three, fig these three figures are used to describe the, spe the spatial orientation of the, of the samples that correspond to the anterior, the middle, and the posterior of, of the DLPFC samples. So here, uh, this is, uh, these are good images that are only showing the first five samples that you can see in the rows uh, here uh, in the in the in the y-axis you describe the number of the sample of the brain number. And in each one of the columns of these three samples, we have first the HE histology image, and then are used three different marker genes to describe uh, or to catch the pattern of the gray matter, the white matter, and the layer five. So we can see here that, for example, in the in the second column of each figure, uh, we have uh, they have they have been using the marker SNAP25 to look at the gray matter, uh, the MVP to look at the white matter, and the PCP4 to look at the layer five in all the cases. So we can see here that when we have the yellow the the yellow color is is the the pattern or is the let's say the the, is showing the presence of these uh, different three uh, molecular uh, specific uh, cell types. Now for the next figure, uh, here is the supplemental number four. We are looking at the quality control filtering of spots based on low level size. Uh, in this figure, we have the three samples uh, that was used in the study. So here in the header, we have the label of the brain but we have also uh, a suffix that is describing the DLP uh, C position. For, for example, we have N to describe the anterior position. We have me to describe the middle position, and we have pos to describe the posterior position. Uh, when we have here um, uh, spot plots that are showing a discrete variable that is uh, showing true and false spots that are used to describe in pink the true low level size spots and in gray uh, those that have good quality. So all the all the spots that you see in pink color uh, are spots that were excluded from the analysis for having a low level size. Uh, these were identified using scan in all the three samples across these three um, positions. In the next image, uh, this image is the uh, these two images are used to describe the batch correction and the clustering with base space to separate uh, the broad resolution in, in gray matter and white matter. So starting for these, for these images, the, the supplemental number, number eight, uh, here we are looking to U maps. One is before and after the batch correction, and these are colored by sample ID. So we can see that uh, after the batch correction, which was done with harmony, uh, we can see that we have reduced both the donor and the sample ID uh, and the sample ID uh, corresponding to each one of the of the samples included. In the case of the supplemental figure number ten, uh, this is the the clustering basis pay at one resolution in order to separate the the white matter from the from the for the grain matter uh, that includes the layer one to six. So for example, in the panel A, what we are looking at is the three, three um, samples uh, uh, to illustrate uh, these um, h and &E histology images that uh, has, annotated, uh, has been annotated with the white matter that you can see here in the dot, in the dot line. And also we can see here uh, the, the green matter running from the layer one to six, layer one to six, and then another annotation for white matter. And here in the middle, in this solid line, 
we are looking at the at the foci that is like the is um let's say is a landmark used to separate the brain into different functions uh, in general. So he he uh, I have an example the what is the sulci that is just uh, to describe uh, the the bottom part of the of the folds in the brain. So here is what we are looking at in this in these different annotations. This is an example for in, in a second example when when it's making the same annotation white matter, gray matter, and the sulci. And here is the same the the white matter the layer from one to six, from one to six, and the sulci that is uh, separating the folds. Uh, in the case of the panel B, we are looking at the clustering uh, in two domains to describe the, to separate the white matter from the, from the gray matter. You can see here in the three samples, the white matter, the white matter is uh, like uh, colored in gray in all the samples, and the gray matter is like in this dark gray just for illustrate uh, this, uh, how, how, was, how was this annotation done? And in the panel C, we have finally uh, the, a special annotation uh, in two uh, using the two domains, the two special domains uh, against the annotated layer. So we can see here, market with, or cross it with an X, uh, the one that has the highest S scores. So we can see here, uh, uh, a clear separation of these ones and a broader solution. So the next thing they did was during this process of identification of data driving spatial domains, a different resolution. Um, just as a reminder, they used the fold resolution with nine clusters for KD to nine, in which they almost recapitulated this six classical histological layers plus the white matter. Um, they also used the fine resolution with the 16 clusters in which the spatial domains were also laminar, um, but they also found that the one more associated with the same histological layer, or what, what they call improved are molecularly defined layers. And they also used the super fine resolution with 28 clusters in which the domains lack this laminar structure, but this map, the spots also map to the broad and fine spatial domains. So in order to compare the spatial domains obtained with these different resolutions, particularly the broad resolution against the fine, super fine resolution, they, they quantify this correspondence metric between the spatial domains. So what is shown here in these heat maps, in the y-axis we have these plots of the broad resolution, the nine spatial domains, sorry, the spatial domains of the broad resolution, and in the x-axis, the spatial domains at the fine resolution in eight and in B at the super fine resolution. And the correspondence metric or Jeffrey index corresponds to the intersection between the spots of these um spatial to the spatial domains that we're comparing over the union between them. So the greater this metric is, the more similar the spatial domains are. So they prove in this way that the spatial domains that were associated in with a histological layer at the broad resolution were also very similar to spatial domains at the fine resolution and also the super fine resolution that were also associated to the same histological layer during the spatial registration. And in particular here in B, with the 28 super fine resolution spatial domains, even though there were many of these um, spatial domains, they also were associated with the same spatial domains at the broad resolution. So the conclusion here, even though here we have more of these clusters or spatial domains, they are not really adding more information because they are mapping back to the broad and fine spatial domain. That's what they conclude. And Next, they also perform differential gene expression analysis on these spatial domains and also for the anatomical position of the samples. They used three models to perform this differential gene expression analysis. The another model in which they assess for the differential expression of a gene in at least one of these spatial domains. The enrichment model in which they assess for the enrichment of the differential expression of a gene in one spatial domain versus the rest of the domains, and the pairwise model in which they assess for differential expression in one spatial domain versus another spatial domain. 
um, here in this first plot, we have the density curves for the percentage of variance that is explained in gene expression per gene by each one of these sample label coverage. So we have the sample ID, the base space, this corresponds to the spatial domains at the, at the broad and fine resolution. Then the subject sex, age, is the donor, and the position, the anatomical position of the sample, because remember, we have anterior, middle, and posterior. So what was remarkable here is that here, base space seems to be contributing more gene expression variants than the position, the anatomical position. And that was further confirmed when looking at the results of differential gene expression analysis. Here we have the density curves and the histograms, which is for differential gene expression, express genes, of the arrangement T statistics for the genes. In, in, in purple, for your differential gene expression analysis for the spatial domains and red for the anatomical position. And what we can clearly see is that these enrichment T stats density curves have, and I think it's more evident if we look at the histograms here, they have longer tails, which means that they are more differentially expressed and they have lower adjusted P values, lower P values in comparison with the tables of these histograms here for differential gene expression between anterior versus posterior and comparing the anatomical position. And indeed, they obtain around or almost 6,000 unique differentially expressed genes or enriched genes in at least one of these spatial domains at the broad resolution compared to 500 probe differentially expressed genes enriched in anterior versus posterior um, in the human DLPFC. So this is important um, because, as you know, we have anterior, middle, posterior samples that could also be different in terms of their transcriptomic profiles. So it is important to also take into account that there could be differentially expressed genes just because of the anatomical position. But it seems like the spatial domain had a more, much stronger effect on gene expression compared to this other part. This, uh, for this figure here, we are looking at two supplemental figures, the number 19 and the number 23. And I come this that is coming from the main figures to explain how uh, what's removed uh, one effect from here. So uh, these figures are using to, to, to do the identification of broad and fine resolution cell types clustering across the anterior posterior and axis of the DLPFC. So first, starting for the supplemental figure 19, uh, here is the assessment of the quality control across the, the clusters uh, identified. So we have here three panels. The panel A uh, is, uh, is uh, are the bar plots, uh, uh, sorry, are the, the box plots uh, showing the doublet scores. And in the panel B, we have the, uh, the related to the, to the, percent, the percentage of mitochondrial rates. And in the panel C, we have the total UMIs. So um, looking at these uh, three different uh, metrics used here, uh, it can be like a, a SUMET or some kind of inferred that high per person mitochondrial genes and low uh, UMIs have been driving the, the identification on one ambiguous cluster that is here, showing in gray color. So. Uh, but uh, using these uh, clusters, uh, any of these, uh, any of these uh, metrics was used to to drop a to drop a cell. So uh, here, when was it was made the identification of the cell types, uh, the authors uh, identified uh, thirty different clusters in this one, the disambiguous, and this is ambiguous because it has uh, cells corresponding to different cell types. Here's the breakdown of, of the different cell types. So what was done is if this uh, specific cluster was removed in order to continue with the further analysis. So here in the, in the panel B, we are looking at the pre and post uh, uh, removal of the ambiguous cluster. So if you look at, the, at, these, three, at, at these three panels that are in, in B, we have here the information related with the anterior, the middle, in the posterior samples. So you can see here in the top that we have here uh, included the ambiguous cluster in the different uh, in the different cell types that is in like 
gray color or brown. Uh, and also we have here, uh, one, once that is removed this ambiguous cluster, we have the cell, the cell proportion of all these samples. So uh, here in the, in the main figure, what we are looking is uh, the image, one that uh, the information is clean up, let's say that was removed this ambiguous cluster. So this, is, this correspond to the main figure three of the paper. So we can see here, the, the ambiguous cluster were removed and also is uh, the cell proportion is, is clean. We are not seeing this, this cluster anymore. Um, okay, so the next thing we did for spotted convolution was to define the optimal number of layer level cell touching markers. And to do that, they try with different numbers of cell type markers, um, cell type at the layer level, and uh, as is validate the special specificity of the index version of these marker genes in the corresponding layers. So here in the first row we have let me ask for the remote control. In the first row we have the spot plots for the raw expression of PCP4. So in each that we have the raw cons for this gene. And here we can see that it is more expressed in the cortical layer five. And then in the other three rows, we have, this is a little bit different. In each plot, we have the proportion of the, the top 15 cell type marker genes, 25 and 50 marker genes that are expressed in each spot. That is, they are non-zero expressed. And what they saw is that with 15 markers, the, the expression of these markers is not so specific just to the I mean, it is a specific, it's not, it's not seem to be very strong compared to 20, when we're choosing 25 markers. And when they selected 50 markers, the specificity, specificity is no longer highly conserved in just these plots of the spectacular layer. So they decided that 25 markers was the optimal number of cell type marker genes. And doing this for taking the top five, top 25 marker genes for all cell type of the layer level, they validate this special specificity in the corresponding layers. I'm not showing this, those images here because there were a lot of them, but it's basically the same as these, but just looking at the, the expression of the marker gene for all the rest of cell types. The, the composition summaries across the special domains and spot the convolution results. So in the panel A, we have very tissue section for sample, a proportion of spots that was assigned to each spatial domain at the broad resolution, that's we have nine spatial domains. And in the right hand, we have, again, across every, for each digit section, the proportion of spots that were associated with this, the spatial domains at the high resolution. So we have 16 spatial domains. And what is noticeable here is that even while looking at the same anatomical position, the digit sections from the same anatomical position, there's a lot, a lot of variation in this proportion of the spots. And the variation is even higher when looking at the fine resolution spatial domains. Then in the panel B, we have the estimated cell counts. So the number of cells that was estimated by each matter. The cell duplication, spot light, and tangram for spot convolution again, across each tissue section. And this is at the broad level, just picking up the broad cell types and then more specifically at the layer level. And something they noticed was that in, with the spotlight, the number of cells, the predicted number of cell counts does not change. So it's the same, the input and the output, but it those change with cell duplication and the tangram. And when when taking tangram, these uh, cell counts are the same at the broad level and layer level, but they are variable with cell duplication depending on the resolution. And so, finally, these are the results of the spotted convolution at the cell type uh, level across all digit sections. So here what we have for the panel A, the predictions, the predicted proportions of cell type counts by tangram and in the panel B by the cell duplication. And here we have 
we can clearly see that these predicted operations of count for cell type for the cell type of the layer evolution highly stable and very similar between the different tissue sections for tangram and also when comparing these two resolutions. And for cell deletion, they are also stable, but not as stable as in with tangram. And also we can see that other layer resolution uh, so to location is pretty higher proportion of territory neuron count. This uh, supplemental figure uh, was you sent to uh, to explain uh, how is the distribution of the predicted cell proportion when was done a uh, supplementary analysis that includes the cell cell interaction. So uh, the authors analyze the the interaction uh, of the of these uh, ligand receptor uh, ligand receptor molecules and also the ligand against uh, protein tyrosina kinasa. So uh, in this uh, these are uh, uh, violin plots uh, like showing the predicted proportion in spots. Uh, so we can see here that was analyzed the interaction of the ligand with the receptor, only the ligand, the receptor, and all the other uh, in all the other cells against all the other cells. So um, here, what we are looking at, if, if we uh, Pay attention to the excitatory layer five and six, and the excitatory layer six. If that is uh, show at the higher resolution predicted with cell two, with cell two, uh, on these specific uh, neuron populations. So uh, we can also see this pattern in other uh, uh, in other layers. Oh, sorry, in other layers like in the excitatory layer three. But uh, this pattern cannot be uh, seen, for example, in inhibitory populations like in this case. So this is to highlight uh, the, um, the the predicted uh, the predicted uh, cell proportion of this uh, ligand receptor interaction is is particularly uh, enriched in these two particular layers. And finally, as part of the spatial restriction of cell so, so population, they were seen by Single, through single cosine seek data across neuropsychiatric disorders in eight psych and code studies. And uh, in the main figure, they show the results from the images at the control samples, given that this study was performed on neurotypical control donor samples, the 10 donor samples, sorry, 10 donors, and we had 30 samples. But in this case, we also want to see how consistent the results were when also taking not just the controls but also the cases in these studies. So again here we have in the x-axis the cell populations in from these studies and in the x in the y-axis the spatial domains of the fine and broad resolution and the histological layers in the white matter. Each dot will represent the result of the spatial registration. So to reach spatial domain or histological layer, these cell populations were associated with. And again, we can see that in excitatory new cell types, the results are highly consistent. So the greatest cells in this figure will correspond to the expected matches between the cell population and the spatial domain or histological layer. In Hibitary, that was not the case, but just as we saw when just looking at the control samples in these eight studies, they are associated with multiple spatial domains and histological layers. And with non-neuronal, they were not highly associated with just one specific one, but again, they were suspected associations. And this is all we have. And Thank you very much.